Good afternoon, folks, or rather good evening. Um, I decided to do a video of opportunity because I was out at a pub and playing with my Sheena McGrath drum. And if you remember earlier, uh, I did a video showing about the difference of taping and non-taping heads. Well, this drum had more tape on it. And unfortunately, someone spilt some drink on it. And I was able to wipe it off, but I didn't really notice it in time because it actually, there was something in it. I could have been vodka or I don't know what was mixed in with it. And it peeled up a section of it. I went to the washroom and came back and found that people were wiping stuff, a puddle of stuff off this drum head. So I am not happy about that. Don't put alcoholic products on a skin. They contain enzymes that are not cool with the skin head and can screw it up. So I'm not that happy about it. So I, thankfully, it looks like the majority of the problem was that I had to remove the extra tape. And unfortunately, I am left with a tiny bit of line here. But thankfully, that's going to be retaped over. So I thought I would do a video on taping the drum. So um, how to do it. So you'll have to pardon my giant head as it enters the frame and all that. So in this, I'm using a vinyl tape. Um, 3M makes one called Super 88 Tape. And this is another version of something like Super 88. It is not a thin 36 mil thickness. This is a bit larger. I think this is 48 mil. And I'm going to be using this. This is basically an indoor-outdoor, has a better adhesive than using dollar store tape. Don't use dollar store tape. Use something better because the adhesive is much, much better. First thing is you want to get the tape cut properly. And this one is a straight cut across. I don't do this. I actually take the pull out a bit. What I try to do is cut a 45 degree angle or so. So that I have this. So that when you put it on, it's more seamless and it holds better lengthwise than it does. And as you're turning it in, you can actually, I think, in my personal opinion, you get a cleaner, a, a cleaner cut of the tape. Um, I am not, I am not going to be retaping over this. I'm actually just going to be adding a bead on the inside. And what I'm going to try to do is run the bead just with very little overlap and the rest on the skin. All I'm going to be doing is adding one thickness worth of the tape. And that is it. One pass around, that's all you need. So my apologies if this isn't the easiest thing for people to see, but I will do my best to try to make sure you can at least see what's going on better. Get that out of the way. So yeah, scissors out of the way. We don't need them yet. So I have a brand new fresh roll of tape I cracked open here. And I need a place to start. That looks like a good place to start. Right around there, or wherever I don't want to see too much of it. That'll work. So to do this, I'm just going to try to give minimal overlap. I'm going to try to do like an eighth of an inch overlap. It's not perfect. Oops. I mean, ideally, I would remove everything and retape from the back to the front, but I'm not doing that in this case. And then slowly stretch some tape out. And I'm not going to pull the tape as I'm putting it on. I'm just going to lay it on as per normal. And just slowly... Put it on. And 
And then as I go, I'm using my thumb to smooth everything out. Hmm. Might actually be better if I do it this way. Come on. There we go. Smoothing as I go. The thinner tape is way easier to use. There we go. And as I go around, I'm trying to see that tiny little overlap and trying to maintain that tiny little overlap equally around the drum. And I bet some of you are wondering, well, there that myth of does Guinness on the drum head actually help? Well, there might be some truth to that. It's not something I would recommend anyone doing is putting beer on a drum head. It really is not a good idea to be doing that at all. You know, these heads are already treated. I don't know why you'd want to add additional chemicals onto them. But basically, as with beer is, it's a whole bunch of brand new chemicals that you don't really want on a drum. You know, while it may soften a head, I would not get into any sort of habit of putting an alcoholic spirit or beer or anything like that on a drum head. It's just, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. And again, just making sure that I'm putting it on evenly and I'm applying more more pressure on the inside than the outside. Because as you go, you can go a little faster, here we go. You can gauge a rounder taping without stretching the tape at all. So by the time the tape is finished on the drum, you don't have to worry about tape slipping. And this sort of tape is very forgiving because you can just back it up and reapply it, back it up, reapply it. Okay, I'm really near the end now. So, near the end, I only want to have minimal overlap. I mean minimal overlap. So I'm going to be cutting it this way again. Oops. Come on, scissors. There we go. And I'm going to close it out like so. I'm going to go back over with my finger to just make sure that any air bubbles are knocked out. Like that. Boom! Freshly taped head. You know, if you're someone who likes to, to, to tape them up, this is, you know, go with the Super 88 or something equivalent to that tape. You know, I find the 48 mil stuff to be quite good. Ideally, what you'd be doing is you'd be taping from the back to the front. So if you're someone out there who has 
like a Walton's drum and you want to improve the sound of a Walton's drum and you've already beaten the skin in, just tape the head. You improve the sound 10 times better. Um, on really, really, really big drums, it might be very helpful for you to sort of get the tone to be a little more smooth and creamy. Um, and depending on how deep you want to set the tape, and I would highly suggest that you don't set the tape super, super deep, because if you're setting it super, super deep, when you're playing on top of it, you're no longer hitting the skin, and the skin's really what you want to hit. You're hitting tape. You're hitting a vinyl head. And at that point, you got to sort of figure out how you're going to want to play along with that. If you don't mind the vinyl sound, which is very sharp, versus the skin, which is not as sharp by comparison for the most part, this Lambic skin's been well beaten in now. Um, you may as well just get a vinyl-headed drum. You know, Tape is good, but too much of anything is a really bad idea, and having no tape is in the only case where maybe that might be better in general. But for something like this, there are ways around that. And ways around that are by putting tape on the inside. You know, you can do the exact same thing. Run a bead of tape on the inside. And you can run maybe one bead of tape on the outside. So one way of doing it is that you don't tape from the back to the front. You just pick the bearing edge. And you tape from the bearing edge and around. Or just over the bearing edge. And then you tape the underside of it. And that kind of gives you a sort of tabla drum sort of style. Tabla drum sort of feel to it. The only thing that it takes away from it is that, of course, there's no pad in the middle of the drum. So you don't exactly have a tabla effect. But you do get a more direct set of tones. So now this drum is fixed. And it looks very good. It looks you know, better than the taping job I did previously, actually. Because I used the skinnier tape. So, you know, bad on me. But this is much, much better. And it covers up all the, the stuff where the old tape came off and kind of discolored part of the skin. So that's done. No skin damage. Freshly taped drum. Let's get back to the bar. See you, folks.